Good morning. Namaste to each of you. Thank you for joining me this morning to honor your mind and your body and your spirit. Let's just take a moment to become present. Find a nice, comfortable seated position where you can sit with your spine and the back of your neck, nice and long, and tall, opening up your chest, opening up your diaphragm and opening up your heart. Gently close your eyes and soften your thoughts. Soften your eyes, soften your shoulders, and soften your heart. Observe your breath as it is, soft and gentle, breathing life into you with each inhale and relaxation with each exhale. Feel the grace of being present, returning to that awareness again and again. You open your eyes. For this morning's intention, you may think of a positive word or phrase to have with you on your mat and perhaps carry with you throughout the day. For this morning's intention, I'd like to talk about the fourth of the five yamas, which is brahmacharya. And brahmacharya has kind of a long history and it's a Sanskrit for one of the original meanings of it, which was celibacy. That one wasn't very popular. So um, over time, it evolved to um, meaning non-excess. And then more recently, it's been known as finding that proper use of energy. So brahmacharya keeps us in balance by asking us to use our energy wisely. And that's through all three um, meanings of it. It, um, it asks us to use our energy wisely in order to create a balanced life. It reminds us that we need both work and play, effort and ease, inhaling and exhaling, saying yes and also saying no. And um, it basically is trying to find that balance between overdoing and underdoing because both overindulgence and deprivation leaves us depleted. So in practicing yoga, the, th the third limb of yoga, the asanas, the poses, um, we, we um, incorporate brahmacharya into our practice by having stillness come to our mind, to our busy mind, um, kind of balancing that off, we find a, that awareness of our body in finding that sweet spot where you're not um, overextending yourself, or maybe you could have a little bit more room to move um, in your body, that, that sweet spot. And then also mindfulness in our inner, keeping our inner spirit focused on the present. So for this morning's um, pranayama, our breathing technique, there's one that's really great for balance and it's called samaviti. Um, it's equal length breathing. And it's a nice calming and balancing breathing technique. So I'd like to start you off by just closing your eyes and observing your breath and focusing on your inhales and your exhales and seeing if they are one longer than the other, maybe one's choppier 
one smoother. Just kind of tune in for a moment. I'll be quiet and see what your natural breath feels and sounds like inside. So when we incorporate uh, Samadriti, um, we use a technique that's um, basically counting. And I'd like to have you count, uh, inhale to the count of four, and then your exhale to the count of four. And just really feel that breath kind of smooth out and become, uh, or trying to balance it, you know, because. If you give it a lot of effort, your inhale might be a little bit more um, a count to six, perhaps, and then your exhale might be a count to four. But try to really focus on synchronizing your breath inhale and your breath exhale to the count of four. So let's try that for a few moments. I'll, I'll do the count if you like. Um, so inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, four. Inhale, one, two, three, four. Exhale, one, two, three, and four. So that's a, one of my favorite breaths I've mentioned before, breathing techniques. Um, that one, um, if I have trouble sleeping at night, I just kind of count, do that count. Oftentimes it's a count to six, but you find whatever count works for you. And it just kind of creates that nice smooth um, rhythm to my breath, almost like ocean waves flowing in and out. And then after a few moments, I'm asleep. It's really a lovely breath breathing technique. And for our meditation this morning, you can continue with that. Um, I found um, in my live your yoga cards, a uh, meditation that's called mudra meditation. And basically, it's just um, using the count again, bringing your index finger, one, middle finger, two, ring finger, three, pinky finger, four, and just kind of keep going through that as you're breathing. Now, that card suggests that you inhale, um, well, no, you inhale and exhale to um, the count of one. So you could either use um, whichever way you want to do it. Inhale using all four fingers, and that would be kind of fast. Or a full inhale, exhale to one. Inhale, exhale to two. Inhale, exhale to three. Inhale, exhale to four. That's the way the card suggests. And by the way, this is our... Um, Gyan uh, Mudra, which is uh, for concentration. The middle finger and the thumb together, that is for patience. Ring finger and uh, thumb together is strength. And pinky to thumb is communication. So that's just kind of a fun fact. Um, you're, you're doing basically the count, but you're also kind of uh, sending uh, the energy back into you to um, focus on those particular um, traits. So let's do our meditation for a few moments. Um, and again, you can just use your gyan, the concentration one, and count to um, four. It's your meditation. I'll meet you on the mat.
may return to your normal um, breathing. And we'll start our asana practice by doing a few neck head stretches, not too many this morning. Um, so gently um, exhale, lowering your eyes to the mat, to the floor, to the ground. And then inhale, lifting your eyes up to the sky, just above the tree line. And then exhale, sending your eyes back down. Inhale, sending your eyes back up. Exhale, sending your eyes back down. You move your head too. <laughs> you can move your head along with your eyes. Exhale, or inhale, moving your eyes back up. And then come back to a neutral position. And then we're gonna move from side to side. So exhaling to the left. Inhaling back to center, exhaling to the right. Inhaling back to center, exhaling to the left. Inhale back to center, exhale to the right. Inhale back to center. And we're going to do some shoulder shrugs, but in a different way this morning. We're gonna Bring our hands to our heart center. And you can have your elbows pointing down to the mat. And we're just gonna open up our hands as far back as is comfortable for you. Again, finding that sweet spot between overdoing and underdoing. And then come back to center. So inhale out. Think of coming through a doorway and maybe holding on to the door jam and then back to center. Inhale, back, and then back to center. One more time, inhale, back, and then back to center. And for uh, the next asana, we'll do our sun breaths, fingertips on the mat, Inhaling, bringing our hands up over our head. And then exhaling, bringing our hands down. Inhale, up over our head. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, down. One last time, inhale up, and exhale down. Now we bring our right hand to our left knee, we bring our left hand behind our hips, twisting our torso to the left. Take a couple of deep breaths here. And then come back to center and bring your left hand to your right knee, bringing your right hand behind your hips, twisting your torso to the right, sending your gaze straight out. Take a few deep breaths here. And they come back to center. We bring our right hand to our left knee, left hand behind our hips again, twisting our torso to the left. And then leaving our right hand on our left knee, we're gonna bring our left hand over to our right knee crossing our arms before our ribs. And then we're gonna bring the backs of our hands together. And we're starting on eagle arms, and this is a 
a great spot right here. This feels comfortable for you. We raise our elbows up slightly so that they're uh, comfortably at shoulder height. And then if you can, totally optional, you can bring the palms of your hands together. That's full on eagle arms. And just take a few deep breaths, sending that exhale into your arms. Feel it run from your shoulders on up to your fingertips. And then we'll release that. We'll bring our left hand to our left knee. Bring our right hand behind our hips, twisting the torso to the right. Take a few deep breaths here. And then leaving your left hand on your right knee, you bring our right hand and place it on our left knee, again, crossing our arms, but with the opposite arm is over the top now. And then we're gonna bring the backs of our hands together and bring our elbows up to shoulder height or a comfortable height for you. And then if possible, you can bring the palms together. So you're really doing, this is our ultimate, what I call pretzel pose. <laughs> so you could do any portion of that, whatever is comfortable for you. Then again, take a few deep breaths, sending that nourishing exhale into your shoulders, down through your arms and elbows, up to your fingertips. And then we can release our hands. We're going to roll down on our back. You can roll down either with your knees bent and arms extended, rolling down one vertebrae at a time. Or you can lay your legs down and do that same one vertebrae at a time. Or if you like the express method, just kind of tuck under and roll back. You're going to do the legs extended one vertebrae at a time. Ooh, feels nice. Then we can bring our knees up to our chest and give them a nice gentle hug. And then rock back and forth, give our lower back a nice gentle massage to start us off. And then slide both feet down to the bottom of the mat, coming into reclined mountain pose. So we're gonna take the sole of our right foot and slide it up the inner part of our left leg until the sole of the right foot reaches the kneecap of the left leg and the right knees extended out to the right side of the mat. And our legs are in the shape of a figure four. The shoulder blades are nice and snug into the mat. Navels tucked to your spine. And then bring your knee over the top of your left leg, right above the kneecap. And then slide your left foot up so that it is then planted on the mat. So this is another version of recline pigeon. Again, our knee, our, what we want to be focused on is keeping our right knee pointing to the right side of the mat. Right toes are pointed up to the sky. And then we're gonna lift our left leg up so that our left toes are pointing up to the sky. And at this point, you can elect to either interlace your fingers behind your left thigh. What I've been doing lately, um, and I, I like 
the feel of it is putting my hands down beside me with the palms on the mat to support me. And then as I um, pull my left knee toward my chest, I'm also pushing my right knee down to the bottom of the mat. So I have this resistance going on here where I'm pulling the left knee toward my chest and my right knee's pushing away from me, again, pointing to the right, but also pushing down toward the bottom of the mat. So we're creating quite a bit of tension and resistance in my, in my legs here. You could do that, or you could just have your hands interlaced behind your thigh and gently guide your left thigh toward your chest. And then we're gonna take the right leg and cross it over our left leg as if we're sitting in a chair with our legs crossed. And this is phase one of Eagle Legs. Phase two, if you wanna get into the pretzel mode again, is tucking your right toes around your left calf. So that's optional. So take a few deep breaths and like what we did with eagle arms, we're going to send nourishing exhales into our eagle legs. And then untangle your legs, bring your knees to your chest, give your knees a nice gentle hug and then rock on the on your lower back and give your lower back a nice massage. We'll do that on the other side. So extend your legs fully to the bottom of the mat, coming into reclining mountain pose. Just slide the sole of your left foot up to up your right inner leg to the point where it reaches the kneecap and your legs are in the figure four, left knees pointing to the left side of the mat. And then we'll put our left ankle on top of our right thigh, just above the kneecap and slide our right foot up so that it lands on the mat. Phase one of recline pigeon pose. Right, our left toes are flexed up to the sky. Then we're gonna lift our left, our right leg up, sorry, and flex the right toes up to the sky. And again, you can either interlace your hands behind your right thigh and gently guide that thigh toward your chest to you reach that sweet spot between effort and relaxation. Or you like that resistance um, style of recline pose, or pigeon rather, you can, um, Pull your right knee toward your chest and then push your left knee down toward the bottom of the mat. So you're kind of pulling one and pushing the other, create that resistance. Lower back is snug on the mat, like bringing your navel to the spine. And that's gonna be an important um, piece to be aware of today, having that navel tucked to the spine. That's um, supporting your core. And then we're gonna cross that left leg over our right leg as if we're sitting in a chair with our legs crossed. And that's a part of the eagle pose. And that's when we actually get to the eagle pose. That's probably <laughs> where I'm going to be. But if you want, while you're lying down, just try to tuck your left toes around your right calf and get that full pretzel mode for the eagle legs. Again, send that nourishing 
Exhale throughout from your hips on down to your toes. And then unravel your legs, bring your knees to your chest, give them a nice gentle hug. Rock your lower back into the mat, give a nice lower back massage. And we're gonna come up onto our hands and knees and you can either um, lean over, um, bring your knees down to the ground and, and come up or you can tuck your hands underneath and kind of roll along your spine until you're in upright seated position, your choice. We'll come into tabletop. Your wrists are right below your shoulders. Knees right below your hips. Fingers are splayed out, kind of gripping the mat. Index finger pointing up to, toward the top of the mat. Navels tucked to the spine, creating a nice flat back for cat-cow. So we're gonna exhale, rounding the back, dropping the head and the tailbone down for cat. And then inhale, lifting our head and tailbone up, sending our gaze straight ahead for cow, exhale, round the back for cat, inhale, lift the head and tailbone up for cow. So we just do a few more of these, deep inhales, deep exhales, really synchronizing your cat cow to your breath. And then come back to tabletop. We bring both knees together underneath our hips and extend our left foot down to the bottom of the mat. Now make sure our weight is evenly distributed in our hands and slightly pushing down in our hands to keep our shoulders away from our ears, have that room space there. And then we're going to send our left foot over to the right side of the mat bringing it off the mat. And then gently turning our head, we're gonna send our gaze back to look at our left foot. Be aware, send your awareness to your hands. Make sure you feel like you're evenly distributed. Nice gentle stretch to your left side. And we're gonna transition from this pose to what is called cow face. And this um, is a deep hip pose. So you can choose to do that, or you can come back to tabletop where you can try um, parts of it. So we're gonna take our left knee and bring it up alongside on the outside or toward the outside of our right knee. So it's actually gonna land on the mat, but being on the outside of our right knee. And then we're gonna walk our hands back. And at this point, you may wanna stop, or if you wanna to continue to cow face, you're gonna bring your hips down to the mat. And your feet are going to be like little flippers off to the side. Your right knee is going to be kind of right in front of you. And probably more than likely your left hips on the mat, right hips a little airborne. But if you can find your way to bringing that down, that's fine too. And then with cow face, there's also an arm segment to it. So we're going to lift our right arm up beside our ear and then drop our hand 
on our back. So our elbows pointing up toward the sky. And then we're gonna bring our left hand around and try to touch our fingertips. Just bring it up the back, your back toward your right hand as far as what's comfortable for you. And this is the full cow-faced pose. You can release your arms, bring them back down to the mat, bring yourself back to tabletop, and we'll do that on the other side. Yippee! So we'll start off with our, our uh, cat cow. We'll do a few of those. And rounding our back for cat. Inhaling, lifting our head and tailbone up for cow. Exhaling, rounding the back for cat. Inhale, it's bending your gaze out in front of you, tailbone up for cow. And then continue on for a few more deep inhales and exhales. And then we're going to bring our knees together right under our hips. Extend our right leg back to the back of the mat. And pushing down in our hands, making our weight evenly distributed in our hands. And then we're going to bring our right foot over to the left side of the mat, extending it outside of the mat. And gently turning our head and looking toward our left foot or actually right foot. And then we're gonna drop that right knee down to the mat on the outside of our left leg. Walk our hands back. Come to that point where you feel that effort and relaxation. And if you can make it down to the mat, it's fine. And this looks very different on this side for me. My little flippers are kind of askew. My knee's not quite in front of me. Just shows the, the difference of the side style of my body. And then, the arms are very different on this side for me too. Raising left arm up to the sky and then drop your left hand to your back and swing your right hand around and have it slide up toward your left hand. My fingertips don't even come close to reach here. So in this pose, you can find that sweet spot for yourself where you're not overdoing or maybe you're not underdoing as well. And then we're going to walk our hands back, come back into tabletop. Tuck our toes under, walk our hands back, coming into a squat. And we're going to stay in the squat just for a moment. And if you're able to become, bring your hands up to your heart center, balancing on the balls of your toes. Try to find a nice straight spine. And then you can try to push up from here, or if you want, you can bring your fingertips back down in the mat and then push down to the balls of your feet and come up to a mountain pose. So mountain pose, our toes are gonna to be facing the long edge of the mat or straight edge of the mat, I'll put it that way. And we lift our toes up off the mat, 
bringing them back down, lifting our heels up off the mat and bringing them back down, really feeling that ground, grounding connection to our earth, to our mat. Legs are nice and straight and strong. Knees are gently bent. Navels tucked to the spine. And again, today, a uh, lot of what we're gonna do um, is focused on that, that, uh, that core and act, or, uh, activating your core. Navel, our shoulders are relaxed and rolled back. Chin is tucked slightly toward your chest. The crown of your head reaching up to the sky. Your essentials of good posture, also known as mountain pose. So sweeping your hands up overhead, big inhale, and then exhale, bringing your hands down, bending your knees as you go, landing your hands on the mat. And then bringing your hands up toward your shins. Straightening out the spine of your back. So your spine, back of your neck's nice and long. And then exhale, dropping the crown of your head down toward the mat. We'll just stay here for a moment. Really feel that uh, gravitational pull. That's providing a nice gentle stretch. And then sweep your hands up and overhead. Palms come together and then we're gonna come up on our tippy toes, stretching our hands up to the sky and bringing our hands down alongside of us as we lower our heels to the mat. Then inhale, sweeping our hands up. As we sweep our hands up, we come up onto our tippy toes. And then when we reach the top, we just kind of give it an extra stretch up to the sky. And then down come our hands, down come our heels. And then one last time, inhale, sweeping our hands up, coming up on our tippy toes, bringing our hands up to the sky and stretching up toward doesn't say the stars, but it's sunny out. And then down, we're gonna sweep our hands all the way down to the mat, bending our knees as we go. Inhale, half forward fold, bringing your hands to your shins, flattening out your back, lengthening your spine, the back of your neck. And then exhales, send the crown of your head down toward the mat. And inhale, sweeping our hands up again. Palms come up over our head. Palms come together. Supported side stretch. We'll bring our right hand down and slide it down toward our knee. Then inhale, come back up. Left hand comes down. Slide that down toward our knee. Inhale, come back up. Right hand comes down. Slide it down toward our knee. Inhale, come back up. And slide, or send your left hand down, slide it down toward your knee. And inhale, come back up. And we're gonna send both hands back down to the back, bending your knees as we go. Inhale, hands to shins, back is nice and flat and long. And then send the crown of your head down toward the mat. And sweep your hands from your mat all the way up overhead again. And then we're gonna bring them down in front of us, about shoulder height. I'm gonna do a few chair poses. So chair pose, it's really important to find that uh, navel tucked to the spine to support your lower back and you do that. 
and we're going to lower our hips toward our ankles. And as you do that, lowering down toward the ankles, look at your knees and just have your knees um, stay behind your big toes. Don't, have, don't cover up your big toes. So you're sitting down in your chair. And you still see your big toes, and most of your toes. And then we'll come back up, stretch up to the sky. And then we're gonna lower our arms again to shoulder height in chair pose, lowering or tucking your navel to the spine, then lowering your hips toward your ankles, not having your knees extend beyond your big toes. And come down. If you can make it to the point where your thighs are parallel to the mat, that's great. Or just come to your sweet spot and come back up. And we'll do that one more time. So bringing your arms down to shoulder height, sending your hips down toward your ankles. We're about to sit down. Navels tucked to the spine. And then we're going to come back up, arms come up to the sky, send them all the way down to the mat, bending our knees as we go. Hands come up to your shins, half forward fold, then crown of your head reaches down toward the, toward the mat. And then sweep your hands all the way up. Overhead, palms come together. Palms come to heart center. And then palms come to the back of your hips for supported back bend. Feet are hip width apart. Shoulders are relaxed and roll back. Chin is tucked to your chest. Fingertips are pointing down. Base of your palms are on your hips. And just relax and let your shoulders roll back till you find that spot, that sweet spot. You're not overdoing and underdoing. And you can tell by tuning in to the sound of your breath. Is it nice and even? So think back to that sama, sama. Riti breathing technique, equal length breath, nice even flow, and then come back up. How's everyone doing? All righty. So we're going to sweep our hands up overhead. Exhale, bring our hands down to the mat, extend our right foot to the back of the mat. Our right palm is on the mat. Sweep our left hand up to the sky. And then bring that right hand back down, framing our left foot. Bring your right knee down to the mat, top of your right foot down to the mat. Check your front leg so that your knee is over your ankle. And then we're going to come up into a low lunge. I'm going to sweep our hands up toward the sky, create a little bit of a crescent shape, and then bring them back down. We tuck our toes under and walk our hands to the right, alongside the long edge of the mat. Come to a wide-legged stance. Our toes are going to be pointing to the corners of the mat. Heels are tucked in at 45 degrees. And we're going to bend our knees, bring our hands to our waist, and then pivot our waist so that we're coming in an upright position. Keep that gentle bend in your knees. Lift our arms up into a star shape. And then we're going to bend our knees. And as we bend our knees, we're going to actually do some eagle arms. So we're going to bend our knees. As we come down, we're going to bring our elbows crossing over one another and hands, back of our hands come together. 
and it doesn't matter which arm is over which. And then we're gonna come back up to star. Gentle bend your knees, toes, toes are pointing out. And then we're gonna come back down, bending our knees, and then do the opposite. So whichever arm you've had over the other, switch it. We'll do two more of those. So come back up to star. Inhaling, deep inhale, and then exhale back to the original arm over arm. Palms come to the back, or backs of the hands come together. If you want, you can do the palms together. And then back up. And then coming back down, switching the arms. Backs of the hands come together. Palms can come together. And then back up to star. And we're going to lower our arms to shoulder height. Pivot our right foot toward the left. Pivot our left foot toward the top of the mat. Bending that knee, coming into warrior two. Our chest is open to the long side of the mat. And with this, your wrists, see if you can have your wrists um, if you drop a penny from your wrist, they would land on your, your feet. So come into a kind of a wide stance there. And then gently turn your head to the left fingertips. And then lowering your right hand, lifting your left hand up for reverse warrior, keeping your front knee bent. And then bring your left hand down, bringing your left forearm to your left thigh, sweeping your right hand up and over to create a nice long line of energy from your toes to your fingertips. And then bring your right hand down to the mat, pivoting on your back foot coming into runner's lunge. And then we're gonna bring our left foot to meet our right foot, coming into plank pose. Navels tucked to the spine. Heels are pushing to the back of the mat. And gently lower knees, chest, chin, or chaturanga, keeping your elbows tucked to your side. And gently lift your chin and your chest up, coming into cobra, pushing down gently. And then bringing your hips to your ankles, to child's pose with your arms extended out front. And then back up to tabletop, tuck your toes under, lift your hips up to downward dog, and pedal out here for a moment. And this week, we're going to walk our hands to our feet. So you're kind of moving the opposite direction. Slowly walk your hands back toward your feet, coming into a forward fold position. And then sweep your hands from the mat all the way up overhead. Palms come together. Palms come to heart center. And we'll go into our eagle pose. All the components we'll put together that we've been practicing this morning. So we're going to start with our left foot firmly planted in the mat. So just putting your hands on your hips, uh, keep you somewhat balanced, keep your, your shoulders up and back. And then we're gonna just take our right toe 
and cross it over our left. Okay, this is like an old Gene Kelly type thing. Um, you know, in the old days, they used to have a lot of movie stars standing in this position. So just find the stability in this, just having your right toe touching down on the mat. And then slide your right leg over your left leg so that you're not sitting in the chair yet, but you've crossed your legs as if you had. And then we're going to bring our right arm underneath our left arm or the eagle arm portion of it, lifting our elbows up toward our shoulders. And then we're going to lower our hips as comfortably as we can down toward our ankles using that chair pose. Again, your navel's tucked to your um, spine, supporting your lower back, and just slide down toward your hips toward the ankles. And you use your toe as a balance. Use your dristy, finding a spot that's still. And then come back out of it. Yay! And we'll do that on the other side. So we sweep our hands up overhead, bring our hands down to the mat, bending our knees as we go. We extend our left leg back, planting our left hand in the mat. We sweep our right hand up to the sky. And then back again, down. Our left knee comes down to the mat. Top of our left foot comes down to the mat. Our front leg, the knee is over the ankle. We'll come from the low lunge, lifting our arms up toward the sky. And then bring them back down. Come back into runner's lunge. Bring your hands to the left side of your foot and walk your hands along the straight edge. I'll turn around of the mat. Toes are pointing out to the corners. Heels tucked in, gentle bend in your knees. Bring your hands to your hips and then pivot your waist up so you're in upright position. Just sweep our hands up to the sky, coming into a star pose. And then we're going to bend our knees, and as we bend our knees, we're going to bring one arm over the other, backs of our palms together for eagle arms, and then back up again. Star pose, come back down, switching the arms. The other arm is under, backs of the palms together, and back up. Two more times, coming back down, switching your arms, come back up, and then one last time, switching arms, and maybe make this one the pretzel you move, pretzeliest move of all, and then come back up. Lower our arms to shoulder height, Pivot our feet to the opposite side, or for me, it's the opposite side, um, and come into warrior two. And you want to, in this warrior two, stretch out your position of your feet so that they're resting right below your uh, um, wrists. And gently turn your head to your right fingertips. Raise your right fingers tips up to the sky as you drop your left hand down for reverse warrior. And then bring your right hand all the way down to the mat. Bring your left hand down, pivot on your back quick, coming into runner's lunge. And then bring your right foot back to meet your left foot, coming into plank pose. 
And then chaturanga or knees, chest, chin, down to the mat, keeping your elbows tucked to the side. And then gently coming up into cobra. And then keep pushing with your hands, come up to tabletop and then down to child's pose. Come back up to tabletop, tuck your toes under, lift your hips all the way up to the sky for a downward dog, and pedal out here for a moment. And then we'll walk our hands to our feet, coming into forward fold, and then sweep our hands all the way up overhead. Palms come together, palms come to heart center. And we'll do the eagle pose on the other side. So this time we're planting our right leg down firmly into the um, mat. Hands on your hips, navels tucked in. Bring your left toe, crossing it in front of your right foot. Bring your toe down, just tapping on the mat. And then we'll bring our left th the thigh a little bit up so that your foot's off the mat. And then we're going to bring our left arm under our right arm. Palms, our hands go, um, back of the hands go together. And then we can slowly lower our hips down toward the mat. Lifting our elbows up to shoulder height, finding that dristy. And if you're able to do a little bit more of a, eh, nope, not today, eagle wrapping your toes around your shin. Great. And then release. Well done, everyone. Overdoing it and underdoing it. That to me is kind of an overdue pose, but again, you can find your own modification in that. Make it yours, make it right for you. So we bring our, our uh, toes, pinky toes out to the edges of the mat. Palms come to heart center. We lower our hips down toward the mat. Wide legged squat. Our toe or so comes between our legs. Elbows are resting on the inner part of our legs. Hands come down toward the mat. And then bring our sit bone to the mat. And we'll roll back. Let's choose the express method today. We're running out of time. So hands tucked under your knees and just let your spine roll back down to the mat. Knees to chest, give them a nice gentle hug. Send your arms out to the side, shoulder height. And exhaling, bringing your knees to the right side. laying them on the mat and gently turning your head to the left to look at your left fingertips. Then inhale, turning your head back to center. Then inhale, lifting your legs back to center. And then exhale, lowering your legs to the left side. And then gently turning your head to look at your right fingertips.
And slowly turn your head back to center, lifting your legs back to center. And then extend your legs down to the bottom of the mat. Let your heels come out to each corner and let your feet just flop open. Draw your arms toward your torso to the point where they come at 45 degree angle and you feel your shoulders are nice and snug as a bug in the mat. Palms are facing up. And just take a few deep breaths. Each time you exhale, relax deeply into the mat. This morning's poem I have for you is in honor of the first day of spring coming this Monday. And it's actually a blessing. It's called Spring Equinox Blessing. From its winter sleep, the earth is awoken. The cycle of nature, true and unbroken. The promise of spring, of life, a new start to fill you with faith in mind, body, and heart. The perfect wheel of nature keeps spinning with proof that an ending is just the beginning. Rejoice in this season. May it fill you with peace and may the blessings of nature for you never cease.